Let me welcome and uh, uh, happy we welcome uh, Senator William Brock. So here's my concern as, as a person that's involved in a lot of education, training, job creation, but also in education, which is a passion of mine. If the world is changing so that, to the point where most of our information is coming from social media, if the jobs that are being created are jobs that are in information management, systems engineering, I've got a grandson out with Amazon working on a web development in Seattle. If those are the jobs, what happens to the steel work? Or the farmer whose productivity is now being overwhelmed by changes in the crop industry or in or technology or other kinds of competition. Where do we go with these issues in terms of the jobs that are going to be created? Here's the danger. Our government was set up to be slow to act deliberately. We didn't like the king. So we set up a government that's tripartite, House, Senate, is the legislative, White House, Executive, Justice Department, and our Judiciary. Order. Everybody has a voice in that. It's designed to be slow to act because we don't want some emotional binge taking us from one radically bad approach to the next. But the world is changing faster than ever. So what happens? It's almost impossible for this government to give, keep up with a changing world. So what's happening in, in, in terms of people then? They're saying, I don't think the God works for me. So maybe I have to stay in business because business doesn't have any nationality anymore. Not the big news. Business can be fast, quick, improve, adapt, and adjust and, and start grabbing opportunity wherever it is. We're going to see all kinds of pressure in this country on us as individuals, on our families, on our communities, on our states. Because the pace of change is making it tougher and tougher for government to work at all. And this is not a class on government politics. But that's going to affect whatever you do, wherever you are. And I don't know that I can advise my own grandchildren how they should adapt other than to get a good, clear sense of you, who you are, where you want to be, and keep your skills as widely spread and as flexible as you could possibly be. You're going to live in a world that's radically different from your parents, much less your grandparents. If you think in those terms and look at the, the state of the world, as an optimist, you can say this is the most exciting world we've ever had in the history of mankind. The opportunity is going to be bigger, faster, more fun. But they're also going to be riskier. They're going to be forces that almost overwhelm the system of education. That's what you've got to think about. Yes, ma'am. Um, sorry. Uh, what is your take on like, quotas on imports, like in regards to the U.S. in relation to like international business? Do you believe that Having high quotas on imports is good for trade or bad for trade? Quotas are almost inevitably stupid. <laughs> you gotta be really dumb to think you get an advantage by doing that. It's like on a tariff. What are you what are you gaining? You gain by doing business. The more you have quotas, the more you have tariffs, the more you have non tariff barriers, the more you impede the exchange of goods and services the more you're slowing down your growth opportunity, your job creation opportunity. So I can't imagine. I'm sure there's some thing up the atmosphere that I'm missing, but I can't imagine the quota that I like. 
Never got to that. So you mentioned the loss of manufacturing jobs. So do you think the administration, the current administrations of either the United States or the United Kingdom, which seems so radically different from previous administrations, will be able to play a role in resolving the issues that these workers feel uh, is wrong with the system? Um, Part of the problem in American politics uh, is the essential problem, the dishonesty of our description of the problem. It, you know, when I was in Congress, there was a very aggressive Louisiana senator. Thank you. Was, uh, his name was Russell Long. And I loved him. He was a Democrat friend of mine that I just, I was, we were good buddies. But he had a way to put it. He said, don't blame me. Don't blame you. Blame the fellow behind the tree. Always find somebody else to blame. Why do we have people that are being disadvantaged? Because we're describing the wrong the wrong problem. Unemployment in manufacturing hasn't been caused by international competition. It's been caused by productivity changes, market changes. But the, the jobs that have been lost in relative terms of international competition are minuscule compared to all the other factors that are reaching up. We're not preparing ourselves to be productive and globally. In a high-tech Knowledge intensive global economy, we got to be knowledge capable or skill capable or hopefully combination of both. Okay? So, what have we done? We have let trade policy be focused on the larger goal. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. But we've ignored the impact in certain areas. So maybe that 55-year-old steel worker is saying, what do I do now? Well, what did we tell him, what did we do to prepare him 20 years ago when he could change, when there were new opportunities being developed? We haven't been thinking about the construct of our total policy. We we'll have a good policy up here and a good policy over here and think they're related to each other. They're not. Unless you create some sort of a combination of policies that says, okay, I've got to take care of the shifting economic circumstance uh, on the farm or in that steel mill or wherever. And you've got to do it by giving them the opportunity to employ whatever skills they have by education, training, and mobility. We don't let people move in this country anymore, it's almost impossible. How many skills are there in the United States where every single state has a different criteria for the skills that are required? I don't know if any have an interest in being a hair drop, a hair stylist. Probably not a lot. But every state has a different set of standards on who can be and what their qualifications are. It is just plain stupid. But we think like that, but we're not thinking at all. <laughs> so, we think where you're going with this as a, as a country. We look at the totality of your body politic. Look at the construct of your education and training foundation. Look at the opportunities there that you create with all range of federal policies and state and local policies that you have. And when you got those fundamentals, then create a system with other countries that allows you to deal with each other constructively. <coughs> well, what you this, got? well, have fun. <laughs>